I got it. I'm on top of it. We're good. Yeah, you got the. <laughs> we got the hang of this. Oh yeah. All right, yo. So, <gasps> oh my God, my scoreboard servant Alfred has failed again. He's a terrible scoreboard servant. Yes, he is. He keeps making mistakes. It's like he's not a perfect human being. You need to replace him with a robot that will never make mistakes. Well, that would solve some some problems, but uh, definitely not all of them. Anyway, it's um, you know let's introduce the players after this nice fail at the start that just gives the right taste to the cast itself. We have here spawning the top, not bottom again. Thinking about bottoms, top left position he is Soul. And in the bottom right position, we have the winner of one of the Yegolus Master Cups, Jurek. Exactly. And someone on the chat says. Uh, TVT is boring. No, it's not. What? Not in Heart of Crazy. the Swarm. Guys, you have not <laughs> seen TVT in Heart of the Swarm yet. TVT got so awesome. I mean, most of the matches did. So, now, now I'm thinking about it. Which one of um, of the matchups didn't get more awesome in Heart of the Swarm? Uh, the correct answer to that question is none of them uh, got more awesome. Yeah. Uh, none of them didn't get more awesome. Exactly. Which means that they're all more awesome. Thank you for explaining your joke. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, so Turek right now going for one rack so far. Do we see any early gases? Uh, we just see the standard gas timing. I think yes, we do. So oh, is, is so mining quite a bit of gas. Ah, he uh, maybe oh. some reaper opening action, possibly. Perhaps he some earlier widow mines or something like that. So let's talk this. Let's talk strategies in uh, Terran versus Terran, or in Terran versus Protoss as well, because the timings are very similar. You can either open some very fast Reapers and harass your opponent while you try to maintain your natural behind that wall of aggression, or and we, yeah, we see Reapers. But an uh, alternative to that is to go and build a freaking proxy factory and just try to fly in and put some widow mines, or try to march in with the widow mines anyway the openings got very fancy we have a lot of tech choices after the openings happen it's not limited to oh yes if you go this gas and this um, this timing of your barracks then you're most definitely going for x y or z no now we have plentora of choices uh yeah we have a couple of marines scouting out looking for proxies a uh, reaper opening coming out of uh soul so i'll be sending that right across um, small, there's only really a small area where you can get the Reaper in, a couple of areas uh, into the main, because that entire cliff on the left side is a double cliff, and Reapers can only jump up the small cliffs. That's but it looked like all that patrolling is paying off. He's going to see that Reaper come in early. Uh, one kill down, already uh, very nice to start off with the Reaper. Might be able to delay this expansion, but he's going to... Oh. Yes, he will delay the yes, expansion. He will. He's going to try to take out this... Oh. SCV. It does take many, many a hits to kill an SCV now that the damage has been nerfed. Yeah. Uh, but they're very fast, and they do have that heal outside of combat, so that's going to be a constant nuisance for um, for Turek, and he's going to have to give up map control to this Reaper. Yeah, I'm sorry to say so, but Marines are just too slow. The Reaper can, you know, he can heal in a bit, and then score a couple of shots on the Marines, then just go back and heal back. And oh, 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 Oops. oh, oh, you don't just want to risk so there. much. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't too good. Yeah, but it looks like he just stopped at one Reaper, so getting a good scout on his opponent, doing a little bit of damage, uh, and not even losing the Reaper, so uh, a nice little start for uh, for Soul here. And he's going to be transitioning into some Widow Mines. Yeah, and Widow Mines are this great addition in... Uh... A great addition in Terran's army. Um, first of all, Widow Mines are... Uh, people thought, okay, this is going to be a nice mix. People will be use, will be able to use the Widow Mines defensively. And it turns out that the first use that people have thought about is how to use Widow Mines offensively. Because they are so awesome. That doesn't mean that defensively they are not good. It just means that, you know, plant planting them in the mineral line of your opponent it just is just crazy. But now we see Soul going for a double Hellion drop. Or Hellbat drop. Yep, really strong still, his double Hellbat drop's gonna go right past these Hellions though, so he knows it's coming. Uh, Turek should be able to prepare against this uh, pretty nicely. I really like that he's using the Reaper just in the middle of the map. There's no Zelnaga watchtowers on this version of the map, but he's mm -hmm. using the Reaper um, to just try to keep tabs on movement across the middle of the map. That's exactly and right. Oh. all of his units going across, predicting the path of the medevac to come right over here, and Sol should be watching this. 
and we'll be able to pull back in Show time, but it looks watch. like... Oh, what, what, what? What did yeah. you just try to do? Oh, you, <laughs> you cheesy, you cheesy guy. And uh, yeah, we, we saw that Soul was trying to sneak in the medivac and just drop it, no matter the cost. But now, no, right now he just goes for two medivacs. And with yeah, four he's not giving up. He's gonna, if at first you don't succeed, try again with twice as much stuff, uh, yeah, as they the, say. Did they already tell you what, <laughs> what the definition right of madness top. is? Anyway, we a lot have of damage so being dealt by these hellbats as the pickup drop micro uh, only loses one. The uh, the resource is lost. Worse for Turek right now. But the Viking is out. It's gonna put a timer on that medevac, and oh. uh, still a lot of damage getting done. He's gonna have to get out of there though. Yes. Uh, turns out to be a, an even draw overall. Um, Some crazy micro with those hellbats. Yeah, trying to make stuff happen. It's really, really nice use of the uh, Viking there. Just having that single Viking makes it so he can't infinitely pick up and drop uh, and forces him to make a decision. And the drop war continues. Sturk says, you will drop me and I will drop you. He sends like three Hellions and uh, two Marines across. There was a Banshee coming across. Pretty much just constant harassment from both players uh, back and forth here. <laughs> The only thing oh. missing is right now Siege Tanks and Tors from the Terran's army. Anyway, we have Sol on two bases, we have Turig on two bases. If we take a look at the losses tab, it's exactly the same. So even though it looked, oh my god, that drop did so much damage. Well, it did the same amount of damage that it cost actually because... Here uh, comes the Banshee and the drop at the same time. We get the drop in the top right, doing a lot of damage. Oh, Widowmine takes out almost everything. Still a lot of losses. In the meantime, the Banshee is cloaked and not being controlled, and being controlled. Scan's uh, gonna take this yeah. out pretty reasonably. Is and he gonna make it out? Scan. He actually might make it out. Oh, he's gonna get make it out and live another day. He's yeah, cost so it two scans out. for a Banshee. Exactly, it will force out another scan to live another day. And Turk, very smart. He, you know, he just went for two Vikings. That's actually everything that you need. Anyway, now back to the Soul Space itself. We have. A lot of Hellions inside with just two Marines and a Widow Mind that just picks ooh, all of that. And that last Marine just slides and spreads around on the ground like a nice starfish. Yep, uh, so worker count 36 for Turok and 24 for Soul. A big part of that is not actually the harassment, but the fact that Turok got his expansion up so much earlier. Oh, and Soul continues. At a time. So continues wow. with his Banshee aggression, another Banshee, and uh, you know, Turek still has those two Vikings, but so I guess is just betting, okay, if I manage to get three or four or five kills on the Banshee, that will be enough to make it to make it happen, to make it uh, profitable. And he managed with four kills, so pretty decent amount of kills there for that Banshee. Uh, trying to claw his way back into this game, but Sol is really far behind uh, Turek right now as far as economy is concerned. And uh, army as well. It's just he's gonna have to make some decisive action, get in a really good battle, um, and have a very nice engagement in order for him to come back. Big push coming out from Turk. We got uh, we got a whole bunch of units, two tanks, eight Hellions yeah. coming out. This is gonna be very difficult to defend. Oh, army supply wise, Turk is so much ahead now. So has those three widow mines, and widow mines sometimes are just a game changer. But it. Well, it would be just ridiculous of Turek not to go and check with a scan. Oh, he's sending in one Hellion and oh, 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 all the other Hellions. Now, boom, two more go down, but the Widow Mines will be dead in a sec. And Turek goes in with the Siege Tanks. Now, Siege Tanks have the Siege Tech technology embedded with them at the moment where they are born. And even the Vikings land try to help with some firepower, taking nice example of that Heart of the Swarm opening cinematic. And all oh, the siege <laughs> tanks get surrounded by, by SCVs, just wrecking at them with those wrenches, but it didn't work after all. Now so, just uh, clinging to this little life, we saw a marauder, or what was that? No, it was a part of the Viking just flung across the whole expansion, <laughs> it looked ridiculous. And oh, the uh, widow mines... down here with some marauder too, to, uh, to cut out this, uh, this siege line, but it's not going to happen. Way too far behind. I am Gale, I am. I am. I am Soul. I am PG Soul. Uh, is going to have to uh, tap out very, very soon here. Yeah, Three he's trying to do something. Strong. Push this back, but no. Oh, the expansion goes down. And again, nice physics in Heart of the Swarm. I'm a big fan of that solution. And to lands again with the Viking. Although I think, oh well, it survives. Wow. <laughs> and we have G yeah. from Soul and GG from Turek. So it was a game. It was a game. 
uh, in my opinion, it was a good game. I mean, Soul may not be satisfied with his own performance, but uh, but I think it was a good game after all. Absolutely. So let's try to discuss what went wrong with this. I think that Soul was trying too hard with the Banshees, and eventually the Banshee production didn't pay back, and Turok was good enough. He has placed two turrets. He didn't o overuse um, his scans on the Banshee, so he just defended with the turrets and two Vikings. And also then he used those two Vikings just to land uh, during the push, and he had barely enough forces to make it through. And that yeah, was and enough a, a to big part there. of it, uh, Turk was the defender there on uh, getting his two bases up sooner, and uh, and Sol with the one base. So if he wasn't really able to deal enough damage to make up for the fact that his expansion was so late, so just economically he became behind, and then later the game goes from that point, it's, uh, you know, Soul's just gonna go down at that point. Yep, yeah, you're exactly right. Oh my god, Jack, you were so fast. Did you get invited? No, I didn't. Oh. I'm just becoming so fast. Your reflexes? Did, have you been bitten by a, by a toxic spider recently? Uh, yes. Yes, uh, many spiders here in California, particularly lots of black widows, so uh, one was toxic, bit me. I almost died, but I came back and now my reflexes are faster, so thank you to Sacramento Hospital. None of that is true. None of it. Just you know, I understand that your ability <laughs> of, of talking bullshit translates straight into being diplomatic when, when time comes. Absolutely. I can, I can talk. It's one of my skills. And uh, casting, it comes in handy very often. <laughs> um, and a lot of time in between songs on stage trying to make things uh, smooth, so... <laughs> I won't ask you what was the worst thing you had to explain yourself from, but... Uh, <laughs> or I, I will ask that once we start casting MLG, so when we are on main stage, when you are on spot... <laughs> <laughs> I will just sit back and, and be amused by that That, that sounds great, yeah, that would be yeah. awesome. Yeah, that, that's definitely. the sort of things that, that friends do, you know. Um, that's right, that's what friends are for. I will tell you one story uh, in a sec, though. So anyway, here we have in the bottom right... Uh, why do I say bottom? It just... Uh, uh, you just anyway. you should just start introducing the bottom players first. Yeah, I should. So here in the bottom <laughs> left position, we have Turk. And in the top right position, we have Soul. He's going to try to claw his way back. Uh, maybe with a little bit more damage, or maybe he'll be going for the earlier expansion this time. But uh, gonna have to, gonna have to come up with something here. See if he goes so, for the Reaper again. So right now the game is stable. Let me tell you a story from my university days. Right. So we we had those classes that that used to be right. It, they they were the first class in the morning. You know how those classes work. And, and they used to be extremely technical. I studied computer sciences and one of the most important classes that, that we had. So normally you would say, oh, so that's one of the classes you want to be paying attention in. But you know, if we had a party yesterday, it was very difficult to focus on all the technical gibberish on, um, on the whiteboard. And, um, <laughs> and you know, um, there was a question directed at me, and I, I've had my... Oh, by the way, let me finish that story later. We have Sol going for a proxy Rax. Sort of a proxy Rax, because what this does is he uh, it allows him for some uh, faster pressure with his marines, and he can just fly into his main right away. So yeah. no big deal right now. Very anyway, likely going to see some Reapers with the gas first. Yeah, anyway, we had that class, and a question was asked, and I heard my name, Sebastian. And I thought, <laughs> oh, shit. Uh... So sorry, what was the question, sir? And you know, you can you can put here any any type of, of technical gibberish you, you want. <laughs> and and I, I was I was you know just just snagging my my friend next to me. You know, what is he asking me about? How, <laughs> how how do I answer? And my friend, very loud, so everyone hears. You haven't been paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's putting you on spot as much as it possible and I, I said gee thanks you know no problem <laughs> that's what friends do <laughs> I will uh, I will keep that in my uh, log of story so that way when we are casting on the main stage at MLG I will have one to come out with and all right fine <laughs> let's see what soul goes for he's now building a factory in a nice location so if a scan is dropped there is a chance that this factory will be just outside 
the range. And so goes with this, this strange Reaper opening. I'm not sure how much value will it add right now, uh, especially considering the fact that the barracks are now back home. Uh, I, I can I can safely say that I don't know what was going through the head of soul except the fact oh that now I know now I understand I have just been enlightened so if he had his barracks outside his main what this made Turek do is just stay within his base and play more carefully because once Turek scouted and he was inside soul's base and he didn't see the barracks he thought oh uh oh holy crap you're going for some proxy but no uh you know in fact soul wasn't going for a proxy he was just hiding his barracks yeah uh one of those examples of hiding something totally normal and make the hopefully make the player uh overreact in some sort of way but turk is gonna have the earlier expansion again uh and he will be on the defense if he manages to get this up and uh anything happens just like last game we're going to see uh a big macro game from Turok, uh, overcoming the uh, aggression of Soul. Soul's gonna have to get some damage uh, done here, though, and if he does, he will be quite successful. Widowmine drop looks like a couple of Widowmines and a mm -hmm. medevac on the way. Yeah, just be on time. And on the other side of the map, we have uh, well, maybe not a Widowmine drop. The starport is very late, uh, but we have two Widowmines that will be used defensively the, for, for, of course, protecting the natural. The main difference yeah. here, guys, is that Soul is just playing of one base. And by the way, he has the custom skin on his supply depot, which makes it look like a slug, to be honest. If you <laughs> if you take a step back, just take a step back. Uh, I can just see this big shell and some antennas, and it just looks like a slug. <laughs> anyway, uh, we have two Helions and two Widow Mines inside the dropship, and it's heading straight for Turek's base. Now, is Turek prepared? Um, well, it looks like he's got uh, plenty of Marines, and they are going back into the main area. He's got some he got defensive Widow Mines in really nice positions. Oh, 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 oh shit! Hit. Oh no! So survives. Almost done. Yeah, the widow mine doesn't do enough damage to take down a medevac. It would actually need a couple more shots from marines, and now only Helions are back alive. And is there a widow mine from Soul? Yes, there is one burrowed here. So, what is the summary of the losses? Only five workers killed. I'm not sure that this drop paid back at all. Yep, uh, currently, as far as the worker count goes, he's done enough damage to keep it even, but uh, his command center is just starting. We're going to see phase two of this attack come in uh, very likely uh, soon. Uh, and we do, the, the Hellbats hell yeah. are here, dealing what damage they can, and that singular Viking from Turk is going to really oh, hamper the ability. Of... And with the nice micro, oh, it takes it down the Medivac, yes! Well played. Well played, well played indeed. indeed. Oh, uh, yeah, so to make up for it, Soul's going to be going Jinx. for two command centers here. <laughs> and uh, he's going to try to catch up. But we have a similar thing last game. Turret goes for the earlier expansion mm -hmm. and defends well and is, uh, is so ahead. So right now, three Hellions are on the way. Try to... Sorry, try to defend the, the base. For a second, they're just, just being misleaded by the yellow hit points bar. I just thought that this is Soul's... Um, you know, train of Hellions, but it's not. It's after all not. Anyway, we have two Widow Mines now, and the, the, the bad part is Soul is still stuck on one base. And from where the usual games come from and how they play out, I just see Turok taking, taking the series right now. I mean, so far, Soul is not able to deal any significant damage with his drops. Turok is just defending that. No problem at all. No problemo. And uh, and Sol is stuck in his main. That's it. Yeah, I mean he didn't. The issue is, I mean he didn't look into that drop before he did. He just queued up the drop, and went directly into a giant army that Turok had sitting there waiting for him to show up, and he just lost everything, uh, and did zero damage again. So uh, we have this really aggressive uh, tactics or strategy from Sol, but uh, none of them are working out. Yep. He's gonna be floating off his command center, but um, he's gonna have to hang out for a bit and try to catch up as far as the macro is concerned with a faster third base maybe. Yeah. I can kinda imagine how Supernova would make that work, he's one of the players who would just go all in aggression and just on top of that expand and, and you know once you defend, defend from all the aggressions you would say oh I'm so happy I defended his all in and then you check he has three bases around the map and you say oh my god what has just happened? 
uh, but <laughs> but unfortunately the build from Sol and you know what we what we have so it wasn't so effective. Uh, nope. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. Uh, that is not working at all for Soul, unfortunately. He's uh, and if there's anything we've learned from this match, it's absolutely if you use the custom skins or your supply, your supply depots, depots or your, look or like your pylons, you're probably going to lose against someone who doesn't do that. The skins, oh. you know, skin to win? No, yeah. not in StarCraft. Yeah. Not in StarCraft. We have a bunch that's trying to do some damage. It takes two SCVs, but not enough. And Turek now just moves in with a bunch of Hellions, sends two of them straight in to, to lure the Widow Mines and one Siege Tank in the background. Now, uh oh, uh oh, the workers are trying to rally near the Siege Tanks, but I, I'm quite sure that the Hellions will be able to feel that out. After all, no, the Siege Tank got sniped, but then does Turek has enough forces to deal with this? So, with a perfect Siege Tank here at the top, uh, on his ramp, it was just barely enough for him to hold to this game. Yep, he's still alive. He's uh, he's got a lot of fight in him. He's a very tenacious player. Uh, a little bit of Viking harass, I think, is what we're about to see over here. Maybe just a bit of a scout. <laughs> no. no, we're seeing Viking harass. We That's like to land. <laughs> yes. <laughs> They're actually gonna kill Marauders who were weakened by the earlier fight. Uh, and they're just gonna deal lots of damage here. Oh my god. <laughs> Viking this harass is effective holy, sometimes. Holy smokes, I mean, this this Viking harassment is even more effective than whatever Soul has through at Turuk. And we have a GG Turuk, such a nice player. One of the pretendants to the throne today. We will see how it works later in the tournament. But I think that Soul is out of the tournament right now. And there's mm -hmm. nothing we can do to help that Turuk progresses. So guys... I think you're in. Well, sorry. I think I want to know if you're liking the games. Please do post in the chat right now. I would like to remind you that after the stream is done, we will give out a free Heart of the Swarm copy for the live viewers, and uh, not all of them, just one. But uh, but still, awesome enough, I would say. And um, <laughs> and please let us know how we're doing. We'll be back with you shortly once we find a player or two. Uh, to cast the next games. If we f find only one player, then Jack will be playing against him, and I'll be casting. All right, sounds good. I'm ready. All right, I'll tell you what you do. <laughs>